This is the Caspian Sea. I had planned to come here and sail around it using an inflatable boat that I had adapted specifically for this purpose. However, my friend Rob Church, who was going to accompany me, lost his passport yesterday and wasn't able to make the flight. So I'm here on my own in Baku to try and explore the Caspian Sea from the coastline. It's very, very cold. This is by no means a complete diversion from the Caspian. This is quite a contrast how I plan to be doing this trip. Not being asleep. I've put way too much into this trip to back out now. Because now that I've joined. This is Tamshali Valley, an oasis in miles of semi-desert. This is actually the first time I've managed to swim in it. Okay, here goes. I don't quite know what I'm going to do with it. One of the reasons that I wanted to travel to the Caspian was because it's one of those areas of the world that people know very little about. This was demonstrated when I asked my friends to try and name the countries that surround the Caspian Sea before I left. Iran, Uzbekistan, <laughs> Afghanistan. So we're here. This is, this is uh, us in England. And the Caspian Sea is somewhere around about here. So by that time, um, Wiltshire is somewhere about there. <laughs> Was it Lebanon this side in the right area? <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> no, that's my jam. Um, Kazakhstan. What? What's that? 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 Egypt, no. <laughs> Russia. Yeah, I know. Again, I've got Russia. Also Turkey, I believe. Chechnya and Georgia. Syria. No, it's not Italy and Sicily and that. Oh. No. Caspian is uniquely positioned between Europe, Asia and the Middle East, and the countries that actually surround it are Azerbaijan, Iran, Turkmenistan, Kazakhstan and Russia. The sea itself is roughly the size of Japan and has no outflow, so is either regarded as the world's largest lake or as the world's largest self-contained sea. My original route, which I had obviously largely intended to do by boat, took me from Baku, the capital of Azerbaijan, all the way around the Caspian to the Volga Delta. Even without my boat, I still hope to be able to loosely follow the coastline and complete the journey overland instead. Baku is famous for one thing, oil. And earlier today I went to see Yanar Dag, the fire mountain. This is Yanar Dag, which means fire mountain. And in the 1950s, well, so the story goes, a shepherd lit a cigarette and, and set on fire this whole hillside behind me. The name Azerbaijan means land of fire in ancient Persian, and Yanar Dag shows just why this country is known as the land of fire. The fire is caused by natural gases seeping out of the ground, and this happens all over um, the Absheron Peninsula, where Baku is. But, of course, they don't last forever, and as the, the oil gets vented, um, the pressure subsides and the gas fires stop. But this one has been burning for about 60 years now. I'm scared And somewhat unprepared You think the stars will align in their own time But I don't care Give me a reason to satisfy your dreams I'll change the seasons This winter has lasted too long We got it wrong Maybe I'm I'm now in Gobistan, about 45 kilometers south of Baku, surrounded by a rather weird phenomena. These are mud volcanoes, and you might be able to hear them sort of occasionally belching in the background.
interestingly, despite these being mud volcanoes, the mud's not actually hot, which I'm going to try and prove by putting my hand in. Uh, and I, I hope I don't get burned. Yeah, it's very, very cold. In fact, that's, that's quite nice. Behind me is the beach at uh, Lancaron, or Lancharon, as the uh, locals like to call it. It's not the nicest place to swim in the Caspian because of the crumbling ruins that extend into the sea and the danger of hidden lumps of concrete that you might catch your feet on. But it's not entirely the Soviets' fault for leaving this behind. Over the last 30 years, the Caspian's risen three metres after falling three metres over the previous 70. So a lot of the coastline has been swept underwater. Larich is famous because in the 80s it was reported that an 160 year old man and a 140 year old woman had died here um, and it's famous for its longevity, while well, the Talish Mountains are in particular and walking around I'm slightly surprised because the hills, they would kill anyone. That's your filming, so if you see, if you, like that, that's you. I'm back in Lankaron now, and earlier I went to visit Lerich, the mountain village about 50 kilometers inland from the Caspian. While I was there, I was invited to have a cup of tea with a lovely family, whilst I was wandering around the narrow tracks that sort of wind their way up into the mountains. And it's a very traditional Aziri thing, apparently, that you were meant to be offered a, a cup of tea and some sweets, some, some of their home, homegrown vegetables, fruits, whatever. Um, anyway, this family was very nice, and I communicated in Russian with the father of the family, and it was very, very difficult, but a great atmosphere and lovely to just sit on their porch, drinking tea, trying the various things they were forcing, not forcing on me. Um, I had some of their yoghurt from, made from their own cow, I had some of their bread they made themselves, they gave me some of their very cold water that, been, that had come straight out of the ground right next to their house. Thank you. Spasiba. Near the Iranian border in southern Azerbaijan, there is Yanar Bulag, which is a spring that pumps out methane-infused water, which is supposedly flammable. So before I left Azerbaijan, I went to visit it. I'm here at Yana Bulak and I'm going to try and light it. <laughs> 